Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories that made headlines on national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu. He's a chartered arbitrator. Good morning, Mr. Kende. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, you have full protest. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank God for safety though. Yeah. Um, we hope you're safe where you are. Yeah. Yes, I am. Good. Okay, I am very well. Fantastic. All right, let's just even ride with the protest and we'll be looking at the nation first this morning. The nation leads with businesses open in peaceful Lagos and bank looting in Kaduna. There are a few riders here that says police protesters battle in Abuja. Curfew in Plato, Bauchi, Kajuna, and Benin is peaceful. So, from the look of things, Lagos has been peaceful, Benin has been peaceful, but up there in the north, it seems there's been a lot of chaos going on. Um, I just want to get your take on the whole protest, the fact that some people have hijacked it as well, and then there's a lot of um, looting, destruction of properties, and loss of lives as well. I want to get your thoughts this morning. Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, I think um, to whatever extent uh, uh, the protest for me has been successful, at least in one way. It has drawn the um, government attention to most of the issues that Nigerians are facing on a daily basis and raising on a mm. daily basis, which practically has to do with hunger. And it was because in the past one year, Nigerians have practically been talking about the hardship they're going through and the need for government to intervene and address some of these issues. But <clears throat> it seems that all pleas uh, plea by Nigerians are based on deaf ears, and they have come out to throw out uh, on the street and to make their voices heard. And we had a president in the speech where he said, I have heard you loud and clear. Yeah. Whether that was rhetoric or factual, the fact is that, at least for once, he's acknowledging that is hearing the um, the voices of Nigeria. This is the president that over the past one year have said that we have, I feel your pain. And it's obvious from all the president have been doing so far that he doesn't seem to feel any pain. Mm. That's of Nigerians. Mm. Uh, Talkless of him having the personal pain because the president doesn't have any uh, pain. The president doesn't buy food. He doesn't buy fuel. He doesn't, in the house he's, he's saying he paid for it. He has everything free. So when that average Nigerian are crying out that based on his policies, they are impoverished, they are, their lifestyle have gone to ground zero, and that he should remove the jack boot that is putting on their neck. Uh, you remember that um, that um, that cry, uh, but um, uh, by that American that was uh, killed by police. Uh, uh, what was it? The last log I forgot this log about uh, removing your le leg from my neck or something. I can't remember it. Is. Yeah. Now um, the president said, yes, the president said he has heard. But when you look at the speech that he made, it was what the president just did was just giving um, giving an avenue to tell Nigerians what he has been doing in the past one year. He did not he addressed Nigerians without addressing the issues, and that is my own. Mm. The president addressed Nigerians but did not address the issues raised by Nigeria. So um, the protest has seems to have died down. But uh, what is worrisome to me is what is happening in the north. Yeah. Why in the south seems, seems to have um, be put under control. In the north, on a daily basis, you could see what happened in Kaduna yesterday, that the protest is still going on. Protest is going on in Jos and other major uh, parts of the north. But it should it be surprising to you, my sister, uh, because the north, is the poverty heaven of Nigeria. Mm. Most of the people who cannot eat, uh, cannot eat, and we are even surviving in the, in, in the south. It is worse in the north because if you go to the north, I will see the number of children on the street of the north. They are my jury system. Yeah. We have the children just carry plate about without knowing where the next meal will come. And I've said it time and time again that the problem of the uh, children in the north that are not going to school, they have nothing to do. It's like we're sitting on a time bomb, and when it explodes, both the rich and poor will, be, will feel it. So that is my own summation of the issue. Probably yeah. that the government is that they suppress the 
um, the protests, but having suppressed agitation, I think that we are just um, uh, we are proposing um, pro postponing the input as it were. This one that happened, there were notice. The one next one that may, which I don't know when, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be next, it could be next five years, it could be ten years. That may not be a notice. Well, someone has said. Um, a lawyer has said that by October 1st, uh, another protest might just um, occur if the president doesn't do the needful from now till October 1st. The next protest that will happen will be organic in nature. Is it is without notice, not this one that uh, October 1st is very bad thing. No. Mm. You saw what happened in Bangladesh. Yeah. As the, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh has fled the country. Yes. He tried to, she tried, she was in president, she was a prime minister for 15 years. And Bangladesh is not as far as Nigeria. To a large extent, there is so much prosperity in Bangladesh, I've been to that country before. They are not protesting against hunger because there's no hunger in Bangladesh. They are okay. They are among the Asian tigers. So the economy in Bangladesh is really okay, far, far better than what we are. They were only protesting against the policy. The what happened in Kenya. They were not protesting against one girl. Yeah. They were only protesting against a finance bill that has been introduced in the assembly. But this one here is about hunger. Nigerians are not saying it. They say hunger, bad governance. I don't pray that government will allow this um, end bad governance to be end this government. That is not what we're praying for. So the, our leaders should do the needful and make sure that most of this issue are very, the issue of hunger is number one. And I expect the president to to give us some insight into that. He never said anything about it. Rather, he was telling to justify why he removed uh, fuel subsidy, how CNG buses are uh, coming, how he gave to the student loan, and uh, how um, they have stopped the export, export of petroleum products to other parts of uh, West Africa. That is not what Nigerians are asking. The average uh, the Mekou in Lagos doesn't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. The one in Kansas doesn't know what they're talking about. Even the start is where there's no protest. They don't know what you're talking about. All they want is the prices of yam, garlic, rice, beans, tomatoes, and everything in the market to come down so that they can be able to feed themselves and their family. I don't think that's as simple too. Yeah, I feel I think that's even basic. That's the basic necessity. That is food we're talking about. The little things that we ask for food, accommodation, education. Um, security, healthcare. Why can't the government just give us these things? What is holding the government back from ensuring that the welfare of the people is paramount when it comes to their books? My dear, the protest is not even about education. It's because the person went to a high school. The protest is not about light. The person went to the one who uh, say oh, help me. Yeah. The protest, not, the protest is about hunger. Hunger. That is the minimal, the minimal, the minimal thing that any government and everything about security circles are that. That's when I when I see some of the stories of the those the Marani president, the greatest service team and security team are laughing. For goodness sake, if you get to a point, we are Nigerians have to Nigerians need two parts too. It's only protesters that to start certain individuals. Mm. Nigerians need two parts. If you understand what I mean, yeah. Nigerians need two parts. I told you that I just saw a pocket of about hundreds of uh, protesters, maybe probably 1,000. Lagos then have a population of over 20 million. If 1 million of that population troops are to protest, that will be a problem. The same thing in Abuja, the same thing in Kano, the same thing in Bedouin and other parts of this. I think that the thinking government will be upset. Even in the hospital, somebody is sick. When we are applying drugs, that time you give injection, you will wait. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know about that. Yeah. They will give injection, you will wait. You don't want to give somebody injection, give injection, give injection. At the end of it, you will kill the person. That is not how to treat. So, this applying of uh, this thing that they do, if that petroleum subsidy was not removed on the 29th of May 2023, wouldn't that be where we are today? Although they say it was not the one that the president said it was not the one that has already been that it was not budgeted. But you realize that just that pronouncement. That was what caused what we are facing today. Then we need to issue a floating of the Naira. And the funniest part of it is that are you aware that we paid the land is what we got that was paying an average of about 770 million, um, 770 billion monthly of subsidies. So who is fully 
So why don't we And it used to be 300 there? billion, uh, about 300 billion. <laughs> When it was not Bruce. removed, mm -hmm. now it has been removed, and then we are paying, we're paying even more. So we are paying, uh, we are paying about seven hundred billion now. So who is pulling? So what is it? That means that some people are benefiting from this, and that is why they also not making sure that the refineries are working, including that of them. But those are the issues that the president. And I thought that by now the what the president would have been telling us: Okay, Nigerians have had your to cry. Let me assure you that by the end of September, all refineries in Nigeria will be working. So that the prices of petroleum products will be reduced. That also will bring down a lot of in the next ten me in the next three, four months, in the in the agricultural sector, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that every state has this, and we're going to monitor that within three months, the issue of security will be addressed. Um in the area of transportation, all this uh, so-called CNG or CYG, whatever is just rubbish as far as I'm concerned, because am I going to cheat me as I am? The small the take a small trigger to get out that I have that I'm moving around. You say I should go and change it to say energy that I don't. Do you even know how much it takes to convert to say Do I even have the money to convert to say Those are the issues that the president didn't address these issues. And I think that uh, his mind didn't do well in that speech or the reason that was waiting for the president. Not there was nothing in that speech as well as that was And so many Nigerians have saying that as well, including Professor Wallen Stringer, who felt that the, the, the way I'm the police handled issues um, about protests that was not good enough. Yeah, he even also said that the president didn't address the issues. Yeah. He was just talking about other things. But, you know, has this pro protest not shone the light on so many other things? We've talked about the North and how the North behaved or responded to this protest. I could see some videos even when people were, uh, were on top of the armored vehicle, you mm -hmm. know, in, in the North. And then you see the, the age of the people who came out to protest. About up to 50% or more were kids of below 15. In fact, some of them below 10. They were, they were marching on the streets and protesting. And this seems to show us uh, the condition in the north, how it is. Uh, what do you think we can get from, from, from what happened on the streets uh, as to how to, to relate with the north? Because we're talking about education, talking about food, yeah. talking about a lot of things. But... Ha, the elite of the north, the northern elites, have they behaved well at all? Let's start from there, apart from blaming the federal government. You know, you know, you know I said it, I said that the north has become the poverty headquarter of Nigeria. I said it during my opening, and that is the true situation of things. So, the leaders of the north, the north, before the better part of um, happening now, about um, um, six decades, have been at the helm of affairs in Nigeria, either as military leaders or civilian leaders and you go ask yourself what have they done to be able to alleviate poverty but i want to tell you for free that it was it is deliberate it is deliberate by the leaders of the north to suppress them to make sure that most of because once you educate somebody you educate his mind and he can be able to um react to issues and that is what has happened to us in the, most of the things we see us saying and talking about it in the south is because of the level of education in the south Education is practically key. It did not, they have proposed, the leaders have perpetually used religion and education to suppress the people. They rather believe that somebody very refined or not, you sit down and call to the people to come to your table, I mean, ground and you just dash them food and, and they go away. And so the imaginary system, religious as it were, has not helped matters at all. So they don't want to educate the minds of it. And when you do that, you are, you are empowering um, insecurity, because a, a, such a mind is, will be a, a tool that can be used by certain forces to be able to cause men. If it's 1,000 naira, 2,000 naira, Boko Haram will hire most of those students to do their bidding. We've been seeing suicide bombing in the, in, in the north. Have you been seeing that in the south? Because an average educated person in the south will never think to see himself, tie himself with bomb and going to detonate it. Because he enjoys, he likes life. He has seen the life. But it is very easy. So, I, I said it before, I said the poverty level in the north is a time bomb. And when you treat it, not a student, what they are just saying is the tip of the iceberg. When the issue comes to the court, and funny enough, my brother, do you know that some of these children is going so bad that even when it's a security agency is carrying work, they, they are not afraid. They are ready to confront them. Despite that they are shooting some of them, they refuse to confront them. That is how bad the situation is. So when they want to invade uh, that was good. I don't, I don't see that as being protested because some of them were marching to some of the government, uh, government, uh, government house. 
before they were killed by a security agent. So you saw the video that was making the run. We are some of them marched to the house of the former um, the president, uh, Buhari, in Dara. Yeah, yeah. When the chiefs are down, they are ready to, some of them are ready to die. And when it's got to a point where an individual is ready to die, it is very, very difficult. No matter how you take it, even a goat, there is a level to which you beat a goat that will hit the wall, it will bounce back and attack you. That is the situation on ground. And I hope that our political elite, who are the beneficiaries, because they are the beneficiaries of this republic, I'm not a beneficiary. I don't say anything with the I personally don't see what I'm getting from this with level of poverty. How can I be spending about close to about 100,000 naira every week to buy fuel? How much am I making? How much is my salary? Is that not so That is where they look. I'm not talking of food, I'm not talking of meal, I'm not talking of rice, I'm not I'm not talking of paying the school fees of my children, I'm not talking of paying for my house One room I want one one self con as we call it in Lagos, they are find out how much it is. So those are the issues, those are the fundamental. So when you say that oh, it must get worse because it gets is this we have died after we have died, what who will inherit this good that you're talking about? The president is talking about uh, uh, the uh, Lagos uh, uh, Calabar coastline. Uh, the Lagos, Sokoto, Express. You know the best way we can learn I go enter Express. <laughs> we have to be very, very careful. We have to be very careful. And just, just, uh, just for that, to further that, is the issue of uh, the, uh, the, uh, was it, the threats being issued by the, the chief of uh, defense staff yesterday yeah. about flag. Mm. That's, the next, about that's flag. the next story we're going to take. Flag. No, no, I'm asking you. Is the problem flag? The chief of the defense now should be talking about the issue of poverty because that is that is what is going to breed insecurity. That is what you should be concerned about as, as the chief of the first staff of Nigeria. How are they able to talk with the president and say, President, sir, can we be able to reduce this so that people can eat? When the chiefs are done, these same people are talking about they are carrying flags now. Tomorrow they might carry anything. I don't see anything in the United States people carry flags now from different countries now when they are protesting. What is the what is the issue of flag? They say it's treason, it's treasonable, it's not treasonable. Is that the problem? The people are only expressing themselves and are saying that the only way they're expressing themselves like is it like when they carry you are talking about flag now. Is it like when they carry grenades and start looking for a game for the tomorrow and carry? Is that what you, flag is it for me is still a symbol of peace? Is it when they carry court last? I think the issue should be addressed. I and mean, we should just I, I need to say it on this program that we should stop treating la pan la pan. That is that draw. And go and see the, the main problem now with somebody, which is a headache. How you can do it? If you're having a headache and you're not treating like that, it is just, it, it's just a symptom you're not trying to treat it. The issue is being raised by our security agencies and people in government. They don't seem to understand the enormity of the problem on ground. And that's also the stories. In Abuja, they were shooting at journalists that were doing their job. Is it the journalist that is cause of the problem? Everywhere in the world, journalists are in bed, even in the worst situations. I'm sure you've said that. That's why I see a man, a man who made her name. Yeah. During the war between Iraq and other uh, uh, countries, journalists were embedded in, in, in that so that they can report war. It doesn't mean that they're, uh, they're impressive. There's a big riot going on in the United Kingdom by the right. I'm sure you've been seeing that video. Yeah. Journalists are there on the ground. Um, covering that, this. but you are you are shooting at journalists. You want to be journalists? Are they the cause of the problem? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean that's even a story that's on all of the papers this morning. On uh, the Guardian, it says military vows crack down over treasonous use of Russian flags at protests. I know that most of the people that you know raised the Russian flag, they were asking, um, they were asking the Russian government to come and take over Nigeria. Most of them. So I think that's what he means by it being a no, treasonable let offense. Me, let, no, let me, no, no, let me tell you, it might not be that. Mm. Most of those children, what they are doing, they don't even know. Oh, you see all these ones. My brother was talking about children between 10 years and yeah. 12 years at least. Mm. They don't even know what they, they, they what that flag is all about. They don't know what that is. Mm. Let me tell you, part of it, this thing is that they felt that what the West has failed us. Because what Nigeria is, people don't understand the fundamental, and let me explain that to you. What they are protesting, most of them are, if I survey that, is the capitalist capitalist nature of Nigeria, where IMF, or which is the West, the World Bank, is what determines removal of subsidy. This is not IMF and World Bank. Mm. That is the West. 
Removal of the uh, floating of the Nile. Is it not IMF or World Bank? That is what has taken us to where we are. So when they are looking at the socialist, socialist system of government, although there is no country that is uh, absolutely socialist now, because yeah. Russia used to be uh, USSR, used to be socialist. But well, since it's done to Russia, they are more of a capitalist country now. So those are the areas they are looking at. And it is very, very, we should be very, very careful. Because our neighbor here, Niger, is practically being ruled by, uh, by Russia. Because so we have to be very, very careful somebody this. So to me, the issue of um, carrying uh after people carrying flag or uh, this that is not this. If they don't carry I know that this country where we have seen people carrying Israeli flag now. Mm. You've forgotten some of those protests yeah. in Nigeria where people are carrying Israeli flag. There have been some this as a where Nigerians have been in the especially in the north. So they are used to carry flag in the north. They used to carry Palestinian flags. They used to you know when they attack the uh, Palestinian and rest of the people, the people in government now were carrying the coffin of the sitting president, Jonathan, at that time. Mm. And so that means yes. they were calling for the yes. death of the president. Was that not that, reasonable? Yeah. Exactly. Because I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I think the, the, the chief of defense staff shouldn't even be coming and making such statements. I it mean, sounds fix, political. Yes, fix whatever the issue is. Mm. Because in a way, it's almost it's like you're deflecting. It's very petty. Mm. It's very petty. It doesn't, the chief of defense staff should have to have his heart, he should be more interested in security and not just people yeah. that black. I think that those are not those are not the fundamental issues. I agree with you. I'm on the Committee of Nations. I agree with you because insecurity is a major problem in Nigeria. We expect you to be tackling that, not coming to talk about these things that are almost harmless. I was driving on my way to work this morning. I saw like over fifty army or policemen making doing meetings all together stationed at the lucky toll gate and i'm like we we'll expect you to be out there saving lives instead of being here and just say you're guarding the toll gate so i i i i think the i think what's happening here is they're trying to deflect and it is important that we do not lose sight of what is important the security of people are important if people are complaining about hunger that is important if people need you to do what is right for nigeria that is important not saying that we're waving any flag but finally i want to take this story on the guardian it says federal government pr prioritizing nas state house spendings amid mda's funding crisis there's a lot of data here but i want to get your take on this so we're still we have a funding crisis right but then we're still spending so much money in fact we're still borrowing that was one of our top trendings this morning i want to get your take on how we're spending what we're doing and meanwhile the common man is crying that they are hungry. You know the crisis that is going on in Nigeria. Do you know that your national assembly is on break now? Yes. To the end of September. Mm -hmm. Where they should be thinking of addressing the issues as it were. They quickly um, they said they were going to have a. They thought of what the Steve was, I think it was the House of Reds, by saying that they are cutting back their salary by 50%. Mm. And I said, Lori Rock. Lori Rock, what is 50% <laughs> to a salary? How much is the salary you're talking about? They are not talking about the other, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, mm. according to the Zebra Dye, you know. So, um, but that is neither here nor there. The, we, I said it, we said it, and part of the demand uh, has been that this bacteria legislation is not working for us, it's too expensive. Part of the problem we are having is cost of governance. If you reduce that, practically, what the our cost of governance and turn that into alleviating poverty. Then you know that we, in some of this issue will be it will be solved. How much? See how much they use in renovating in the national scene. Billions and billions of men at the end of it, or they say they didn't do the job. These guys are are cruising. Let's try that there is no single member of House of Assembly that doesn't have nothing less than at least two SUV, what we call jeeps. But of one that they still collect, they stay budgeted one hundred and sixty million naira for one. And what was the the, the excuse they gave? They said the roads are bad. bad. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yes, they said the road was bad. Mm -hmm. I as if I was the one. Who is budgeting for those roads? Who is it supposed to be in charge of those? Uh, this, is it not the, the, the government, the legislative arm, and the and the government uh, and the executive? So that is how we roll. So basically, you're not doing your job, you know, but you're, you're complaining about your job that you're not doing. Mm -hmm. That is it. I know they're complaining. I mean, I mean, spoil the road now, so I have to provide them with jeep so that they go work on the road where I don't spoil. So I mean, I spoil now, <laughs> and I'm my duty to be able to repair it. So oh those are the fundamentals. And I said it to let me just say it in closing once again. Yeah. The poor are not sleeping. The rich, the rich are not sleeping because the poor are awake. Mm. And the day the Nigerian public 
decide to say that a norm is a norm, it is going to be a problem. This is not about poly political. I'm not a member of any political party. Just like each, each two of you, you are not members of political party, to the best of my knowledge. We are just journalists. We are bringing to the full what is happening and yeah. the end of the people. But when it will happen, this one is not a question of giving money um, in, in May 21. This one is that not facing. The people that protest are, face, are not facing. We saw their faces. Those that are organizing it, we saw their faces. The one that will happen, which I have won the game, which I don't know when, it will get to a point that it will be organic. And you will just think that NSAS was a, NSAS will be just a joke. They continue before NSAS said, people are not hungry this bad. People are eating and they are just, all they were just protesting was against police brutality. This one is going to be against hunger. And it's going to be very, very brutal. I'm begging President Bola uh, Tunubu. Who say he is he, he said it's a middle point, it is my turn. Nigerians have handed him over the rest of this country. Let him do the needful. This is the first time since 12, 2012, if I'm not mistaken, when we had that um, occupied Nigeria question, that we have this magnitude of protest against, against our government under two years, just after the little after one year. The president still have about three years to go. Some of these issues being raised by Nigeria, he should listen to them. He says he's a listening uh, president. And they have the ears to listen to Nigeria. Let us listen to Nigerians are hungry. And he has to address this issue as quickly as possible. He told us that he has to approve 70,000 naira as minimum wage. How much is a bag of rice? Mm. That's the question we ask yourself. How much is the bag of rice? So the best way they are selling for 40,000. I don't know if you have seen it. They are selling for 40,000. Have you seen it? They are selling for 40,000. They reduced the price. Yeah, they reduced the price. But it's just unfortunate. <laughs> it's just unfortunate <laughs> that uh, they are asking for time all the time because mm -hmm. all the people that are in this government were in the previous government. Uh, uh, the the SGF was a minister in the last government. The budget minister was a minister in the last government. Uh, Chief of staff was a speaker. Chief of staff is a, was a speaker, and so many of them were here with, uh, when Buhari was here, and they are still asking for time. So they have had nine years as it is, and this are the same people who were protesting against the changing of the mm -hmm. Naira even. Mm -hmm. As governors, as uh, House of Assembly members, they were protesting and yeah. asking their people to go to the streets and protest. And all right of now, a sudden, all you of a don't sudden, want that. Protests will be hijacked. They kept mm. talking about being hijacked. I don't know. Well, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Chris, we want to say thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure reviewing the papers with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm coming to the review this paper. That's been interesting. It's in a game pipe of pleasure. Relax. <laughs> have a nice day, Chris. Have a nice day. Yeah. All right. So we've been speaking with Chris Kende Wandu. He's a chartered arbitrator and he's joining us. We're just taking global stories that made headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we're looking at the aftermath of the protests. Please stay with us.